Welcome into the Dallas Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey, and we're going to break down some draft rumors and some trade implications as well. Beginning with the wild one out there right now. Trading up for Kyle Pitts, right? Yeah, I'm giving this one the one star, and I honestly almost gave it fake news. I would be pretty damn stunned if this actually went down. Now, the report from Chris Mortensen was that Jerry Jones is infatuated with Kyle Pitts and would have to move up for him, which, by the way, somehow became Jerry Jones is trading up for Kyle Pitts. This game of telephone that we play far too often really does annoy me. Now, I do want to make this point very clear because this report from Mortensen is dangerously close to our yearly Jerry Jones wants to make a splash report that happens every single draft cycle. It's like, oh, well, Jerry wants to make a splash and do something crazy. And how many years has Jerry made that splash by trading up for somebody? Hasn't happened since Mo Claiborne. Which reminds me, guys, Jerry doesn't run the draft. The beauty of Yacht Jerry last year was that he and the coaching staff was like, gee, you know what, we're all distant. Let's let Will McClay and the scouting staff make the calls. And we all love the draft as a result. So this is one star. I'm not going to totally rule it out because you could see something where like, hey, Pitts falls to seven. Lions like, look, we'll do the trade for a fifth round. And you're like, okay, at that point, that's fine because the Lions want to move down just desperately or whatever. But I don't think Dallas is going to trade up for him. Because if you want to get him, A, the, to guarantee him, you have to go to four. And going to four is ridiculously expensive. And I, I, I also want to mention again, as I've done before, this has nothing to do with the player. Kyle Pitts is awesome. He is an absolutely fantastic piece. I also think that he would not be maximized in a Dallas Cowboys offense that already features Michael Gallup and CeeDee Lamb. And Amari Cooper. Like, even if you trade away Gallup, Pitts is your third best option. You really want to spend the, the, your 10th overall pick or move up and give up future assets for a number three option on your team? Not really. In the Kellen Moore offense, tight ends can get usage. But how many reps are you going to be able to give him on the true outside in a Darren Waller, Travis Kelsey type role? I'm not sure. And in the end, I think Pitts isn't there anyway. The Falcons, the Bengals, the Dolphins, and the Panthers are all far more likely to take Kyle Pitts than the Dallas Cowboys are. So I know everyone's talking about the Pitts stuff, and I get it. Frankly, I think we should have a, a deeper conversation about, hey, what if Panay Sewell is on the board at number 10? That one I think might be a little bit more likely than Pitts falling to number 10. So what would you guys do? Would you trade up for Kyle Pitts? My answer is no, but I want to hear from you folks. Get your votes in on today's pinned comment on the video. Type Y for yes or type in N for no. Cowboys draft talk now here at Chat Sports. Cowboys looking at Patrick Sertan and J.C. Horn. Four stars on this one because, oh yeah, they are. The report from Calvin Watkins says that the Cowboys officially, virtually at least, have met with both J.C. Horn and Patrick Sertan. Not a huge surprise in light of Caleb Farley's injury. These are the top two corners at the number one position of need for America's team. They have their strengths and they have their weaknesses as well. We've talked about plenty and we will talk about them more in depth here. Horn had, I think, some of the best tape this year against Auburn in particular. Played well dominant great athlete also tends to get a little bit grabby in coverage Sertan not quite the caliber of athlete that Horn is but is also much more refined and polished so pick one which one would you rather have let's assume it's at pick number 10 type S for Patrick Sertan or type in H for JC Horn get your votes in for me in the comments section I think Sertan gets Maybe not discounted is the correct word here, but like assumed. I don't think we realize how difficult it is to be a three-year starter at Alabama, including your freshman year, and consistently be a very good and reliable player. I think you could even slap the boring label on Sertan because we've talked about him for so long, and we know he's a good football player. 
He is going to be, I believe, a very, very good NFL corner. I think he could be a number one guy sooner than later in the NFL. J.C. Horn, meanwhile, is the, the newer guy. Also has some bloodlines, just like Sertan does. Played great this year, did opt out as well. My biggest knock on Horn is that there are points where it feels like he really has to be grabby. That if he's not in contact with the receiver, things can get a little bit out of hand. Now, in general, he has the athletic traits to move on from that, but look, both Horn and Sertan will hold. Sertan's much more adept and polished at being able to get away with it, and that is a trait in the NFL. Now, athletically, both these guys did answer some questions as it relates to athletic testing. Pro day, I rounded up for J.C. Horn. He's just under 6'1". Both guys check in above 205. I don't think it's an accident, by the way, that the official numbers that came out from the schools and in the NFL, uh, J.C. Horn just barely beat out Sertan on, on his 40-yard dash. Quick note as well, let's add .06 to pro day times this year. The numbers start to make more sense. Also important, neither player did the agility drills, the short sh shuttle and the three cone, because they wouldn't have tested that great. The short area quickness agility to handle some slot guys, which they won't face very often anyway, not as great as, say, an Asante Samuel or an Elijah Molden or someone of that ilk. Now, my top five cornerbacks, they, they look like this. Sertan is one, J.C. Horn is two, Greg Newsom is three, a bit underrated as far as I'm concerned, and Caleb Farley checks in there at number four. He was number one before, my, before his back injury, which absolutely broke my heart. So Sertan is my number one guy. I think there's a real chance he's there, and I know the Cowboys like him as well. They have been heavily linked to him. I can't say with certainty... No one laughed uh, if Sertan will actually be the pick, but I think there's a very real chance he's on the board at 10, and I think he is the favorite for the Cowboys in round one. Folks, the Cowboys report is now on the Newsbreak app. Go download it today at chatsports.com slash CowboysNB to get even more Cowboys videos sent right to your phone. You can, by the way, follow us, Cowboys Report. Just search for it. It's pretty straightforward. But that's not all you'll get with the News Break app. You can actually stay updated. It's something that I am generally not very good with because it's always about sports for me. With local news and weather and the politics and, and crime, everything you need to know for your local area is on the app. You can also get, of course, sports content from us here at Chat Sports. So go download that app today, chatsports.com slash CowboysNB. I will make sure that link, by the way, is put both in the comment section and in the description. It's chatsports.com slash CowboysNB. Go download it today. Let's talk Dak Prescott now here. Is he on track in his rehab? Yes, four stars on this one. Sorry to the guy who said Dak was going to get cut in June. Not going to happen. Um, everything is on pace for Dak. And we will do the thing where we get excited. Oh, tr videos, training, he's throwing. It's all great. It's all fine. It's all dandy. Everything is going the way it is supposed to be going. He'll be back in time for training camp. And, of course, the Cowboys are not going to push him. They, they are not going to rush him back since he kind of already did that early on in his rehab process. They will take things a little bit slower this time around. Remember the initial bordering on Dr. Jerry timeline. Four to six month recovery for the ankle and then it'll be good to go. Where we are at about that six month time frame and Dak Prescott is throwing passes, all of that. They're not going to rush him back. They're not going to be like, okay, Dak, you got to go right now. There's no reason to panic. He got the contract already, and we are quite a distance away from having to deal with training camp or anything along those lines. He'll be at off-season off -season workouts and OTAs. I don't know how involved he'll be. He doesn't really need it. Like The offense is going to be most of the same if the O-line actually stays healthy. So I feel good about where Dak Prescott is at. I think it's not going to be an issue whatsoever for the Cowboys this upcoming season. But what do you guys think? What is your confidence level right now in Dak Prescott? Rate this for me on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being you are freaking out, you're pissed about the contract, and you want to draft Trey Lance at 10. 
10 being you think he's the greatest quarterback of all time, get your votes in for me in the comments section. I'm sure we will talk more about Dak Prescott as the offseason moves along. And we are also approaching 100,000 subscribers here on the Dallas Cowboys Report. If you want to help us get there and join the number one Cowboys YouTube channel, most interactive, most watched, I'd argue most fun, and of course most bestest as well. YouTube.com slash Cowboys TV. Hit that big red button and join us. Let's go back to cornerback conversation at number 10. How about Caleb Farley? Ah, one star on this one. I'm hopeful we will get some more information as the combine, well, combine medical checks are underway in, in, at Indianapolis as we speak right now. Farley, however, is already speaking out and says, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. He also said he's going to go, quote, Randy Moss on teams that pass on him which feels like a direct uh, shot at the Dallas Cowboys, especially with how the fan base romanticizes that pick. Anyway, I love the mindset from Caleb Farley. That's exactly what you want your corner to, to, to do and say because they need to have that I am the greatest of all time mindset regardless. My problem with Farley has nothing to do with the evaluation. It is the valuation for a player with a troubling injury history. The torn ACL back in 2017... That was a long time ago. He's played two years. Not a concern for me. One back surgery to fix back spasms. Okay. Worth checking out. Probably okay. The third time, though, surgery before his pro day to help fix a herniated disc. You got two back surgeries before you entered the NFL? That's troublesome for me. And it's not about Farley being able to play this upcoming year. It's about the longevity generally speaking backs don't always get better and especially as you get older so to invest a top 10 pick on a cornerback with a history of back issues i love the player was my number one corner before this now i'm not sure you could actually do that if you are the dallas cowboys